Hello friends, fans, geeks, and gamers. Welcome to a very special unboxing with uh, Zia Comics. Today we are going to be unboxing the game Root and its Riverfolk expansion. This game is by Leader Games. So uh, let's get right into these boxes and find out what kind of goodies are inside, shall we? Professional unboxing tool. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll set the expansion off to the side so you are actually viewing a live unboxing. I have not seen the contents of either of these. I have the very broadest idea of how the game works, but have not actually seen any of the components in person. So we open up our base game there. Nice little plastic ASMR crinkle for the, the headphone users there. Alright, so we have our learning to play booklet. Going to go over all your general components and things. It's got some really cute artwork in this. Another kind of learn to play walkthrough. A little bit of your, your brief kind of get you through the first turns. Uh, the Law of Root, which looks like this is a tool rule, two rule books, reference sheet, setup, all the various questions that users might come across on interactions between the different uh, playable races and folk. Uh, for those who didn't know at home, this game is an asymmetric board game, which means any of the uh, animal folk races that you choose play vastly different from each other. Whether it's the Marquis de Cat, the Woodland Alliance, the, uh, what is it, the Eerie Dynasty, or the Vagabond, each one will play totally unique from each other. Get some more plastic crinkle off on the side there. So each one has its own player board, all with their own unique interactions that they have. Pretty neat. Looks like we have some more kind of explanation of what's in the box. Boy, they really want to make sure you know that ev what everything is in here. And now we get down into our meat and potatoes of the components. We have a, uh, looks like a six-fold, yeah, six-fold accordion board here. There we go. You see you got your bottom board on the one side, we've got the winter board on the other, pretty neat, pretty nifty, and your score track for whichever board you use on either side, we've got lots of tokens for all of the various things that you may have need of, including, uh, looks like some extra punch and you can see the items even have their activation and deactivation, as well as some other cool stuff going on there. We have tons and tons and tons of cards, various uh, types of factions and houses. You have the foxes, the rabbits, uh, what else? The, I think birds is one of them. But these are generally the cards you're going to be using to do a lot of the things with your armies. You have the foxes, rabbits, and mice, that's the other one, and birds. Uh, all the various cards you need for all your various factions in there, would, including uh, quest cards, uh, your leaders for the Erie Alliance, uh, or Erie Dynasty, I should say. Some other nice overview cards. Really great artwork on the back of those there. Okay. And I like this tray design. That's also very neat that it's kind of got a space for everything. Looks like we've got some nice chunky D12 dice, which you use for your combat rolls. Got a good kind of heft 
to them. Looks like they've, oh, these are 12 sided, but they have the numbers zero through three printed on them a few times. So they're not like a, a, a standard 12. So be aware of that at home. Don't just grab any D12 for use with this. And then the part that had me most excited about the game, all the meeple bits. So for those who like little wooden characters, we've got our bird folk, or the, the eerie dynasty. You've got your Marquis de Cat, the, what was it, the Wild Alliance? Woodland Alliance. And somewhere in here is a little vagabond raccoon, or, or trash panda. You stupid raccoon. Don't call me a raccoon! I'm sorry. I took it too far. I meant trash panda. Is that better? I don't know. It's worse. It's so much worse. So those are your various meeples for the game there. Uh, these are what you're using to kind of move around, take territories from each other, interact with the other players, and uh, all in the goal to get to your 30 victory points. So I'll pop those back in there. I like it includes extra bags so that for those whom like to uh, have everything nicely sorted, looks like it's got plenty of space in it for all of your various components and things. Um, looks like possibly even room for an expansion, which we just happen to be in luck because we have that at the table. Pop everything back in, get it all nice and copacetic, back safe and sound in its house. And let's see what, what will come of the river folk. So I'm going to swap these boxes over here. And again, more plastic crinkle, so those headphone users will get a nice experience at home. there as well, various other means and uses that they may have. So we got those. We have some of the new player boards. Oh, that tray is quite a bit different from the other one. I was not expecting that. Um, so in the Riverfolk expansion, the main things that it includes are uh, some new playable races or, or animals, if you like. we have a new function for the Marquis de Cat, which basically turns this game into a cooperative experience by using the mechanical Marquis. So this will give you an automated play sense for the controlling faction, the Marquis de Cat, rather than one player kind of playing as them. Uh, so that'll change up play a little bit there. We have the Lizard Cult with their various acolytes and other means of activation and things. Um, those guys look really cool to me. I thought they, their artwork was especially fun. We have another Vagabond player board, so that now two players can actually play as the Vagabond and kind of get into their uh, various shenanigans with the other folks. And the River Folk Company, um, because they had uh, a, a version of the Vagabond that looked like a little beaver. Um, and people were upset that there weren't actual beavers playable. So they went ahead and fixed that. Also, we have our variant of the Vagabond, so you know who's who. There's the little beaver people. And the lizard cult. So those are all the various adorable little meeples that you will find in the expansion. You can see we have some colorful stones, which I believe these are the to track the services on the river folk people, um, your general kind of glass beads. And then we have the uh, 
card holder here. I believe this is for the mechanical marquee um, so that you can kind of set up what their, uh, their term is going to look like. And you have just a few more cards adding some new mechanisms and things to the game. And that is the River Folk expansion. So uh, let us know what you guys think of some of the components at home. Uh, is there anything in particular that you've been super excited to see a little more up close and in depth about this game? Uh, and if nothing else, uh, be sure to stop into your friendly local game store like Azia Comics and maybe uh, you yourself can even have a chance to play this wonderful game. All right, well, there you have it. That was the components in Root and the River Folk expansion. I hope you have enjoyed this video so much. Uh, make sure and give the video a like if you liked it. Maybe you wanted to know a little bit more about some of the components inside. Be sure to let us know down in those comments. Make sure to ring the bell so that you know when all future videos are upcoming. And, uh, yeah, follow us on all of the various social media platforms, all the different podcasts for all of the nerdy news that you need to know. Until next time, I'm Trevor. Take care, nerds. Get nerdy with me. Tell me what game that you get on. Is it card or e? What kind of class do you play, girl? In an RPG.